This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Mina Shamaim from heaven. They're choosing those ones that will have the ability, the power to deliver the news for our generation. And in every generation they're sending those ones that can deliver the light of the Creator in the most simple way that will fit the minds of those ones that needs the healing and the answer. <coughs> Who are those ones that been chosen? Always we saw it in our history. It was those ones that been the most humble, mean been humbled, humiliated, crushed. And those were the ones that were able to deliver the light of Hashem without affecting it, without covering it, without holding some of it to themselves because they were so humble that they had that ability to say the whole truth. A person that is arrogant, selfish, he always have his needs, he needs things for himself always, so he <coughs> is a not, not a loyal messenger to deliver. You won't choose a poor person to deliver a suitcase of one million dollars, right? Like, you're not gonna make that mistake. Maybe you will, but like, maybe I will. But not, like, a normal person wouldn't do that. Why? Because of his poverty, because of his pain, because of his lacking, you cannot trust him. Not because he's a bad person, because that he's in suffer, because he's in need. And when a person is in need, his mind is not clear. <coughs> Those ones that are chosen by the Creator to deliver, those are those ones that are not in need, not because they're rich, because the Gemara is telling us that for people with money, even if they have 100, they want to have 200. They have 200, they want to make 400. You give them 400, they want to double it, always. Like, you have poor billionaires walking in the streets, like poor millionaires, poor wealthy people that are like they're so hungry, they're so poor, they need so much money. Like a million dollar for them, it's not enough. Like they're so poor that 100 million dollar profit is not money. They're so poor. You can go. Feel comfortable, come please. See my face, it's a new look. Feel comfortable, please. Those chosen ones are those ones that the Creator adjust them, built them, designed them for their mission. That they will be givers and not receivers. He changed their nature, He made them so complete in their attributes that they will not seek for things for themselves. Just that they will have that inner desire only to give.
only to help others, only to clean, only to wash, only to heal, to support, to build. That's their desire. That's what they're looking for in life. They don't look for pleasure. They don't look for fun. They look for another way how to help another person, how to save another guy, how to support another family. That's what that is occupying their minds all day long. Like King David said, all day long. That's what I'm talking about. In your house, in your ways, in your when you're going to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, all day long your heart is full with passion to keep God's will. And you don't know anything else, like nothing else matters for you. When you're that chosen one. And for us, now, back to reality, for us, that we know about ourselves, that we are broken vessels, we're not complete vessels that are shining the world with the light of faith, we're broken. Sometimes cannot even shine to our family, to our soulmate, to our children. Sometimes even cannot even explain to ourselves what we want from life. Sometimes you find yourself so broken and not shining that you don't even have the answers to the things that you already figured out long time ago. Things that were so clear for you one year ago, today, you look at yourself and you don't have a clue. You can't find the answer. So what people like us should do? <coughs> People like us are those people that on them Hashem said that the redemption will come in a generation that will be full of people that all of them will be or righteous or empty completely from Torah and Mitzvot, completely empty-handed. Or that Mashiach will come, the redemption will come in a generation that everyone will be complete, healthy and wise and strong and talented. Not our story, like, it's not like, it's not even an option. We know ourselves, we're not in that position. Or that it will come in a generation that no one will be complete. So the fact that we are so broken, even those ones of us that are holding on somehow, that are being observant and are trying to do the best that we can, and praying and davening and putting tefillin and covering our heads and giving myself and going to learn and learning also and whatever. We are checking ourselves and we see that we are so far from completion that it's ridiculous. In reality, we see that no matter how much effort that we are putting into this machine of cleansing ourselves and purifying ourselves and, and helping ourselves and building ourselves, nothing works. It's like to grind water, like you're working on air. <laughs> nothing works. Nothing works. You want to fix yourself through learning and you spend hours every day to learn for those ones of us that tried that. Tell me, be honest, if it helped you. Like to clean yourself. Are you clean? Okay, you learn. Are you clean? No, sorry. And if you thought back then that you were clean, in five years, when you will check yourself back, then, on, on, on to, back to those days of learning, you will recognize in yourself that you were blind while learning. And while learning, you were ignoring the most important things and you almost lost them if you haven't lost them. 
in those days of learning. Because the light of the Torah was blinding you. And you were learning, and that learning in certain aspects even damaged you. Because it's written that if the person purified himself, so the Torah that he is learning will be like potion of life for him. But if the person have not purified himself completely, not purified himself at least enough, so the Torah can become a lethal poison for the person that is learning it. The Midrash is telling us on those scholars, the Talmidei Chachamim, that are coming to drink from the water of Torah, and they're taking out buckets of water without knowing that at night the devil came down, that demon came down, Ashmedai, and with his impure hands, impured the water, contaminated the well of water of Torah. Now those scholars are coming in the morning, after davening nets, and after being to the mikveh, and after putting Gashi and Rabbeinu Tam, and they're just filling their buckets with water of Torah, without knowing and understanding that the water that they are drinking, the Midrash is saying, is impure. And it's not your fault. The reason for the darkness is not because you're a sinner. Now if you will become a complete righteous man, I'm promising you, it will stay dark outside. You know why? Because it's now 9.20, 9.19. It's night. We are in a generation of darkness. We are in that generation that Mashiach is about to reveal himself. And every day is a closer date to the date of redemption. Mashiach will come, so we're just getting closer and closer to the redemption day. There's not much that we can do to rush that process, except of understanding what is the real plan, God's plan, Hashem's real will from us, from you, from me, from every individual. We need to understand what the Creator wants from us. I need to understand what in the world Hashem wants from me. That's my life mission. I understand that it's written in the Shulchan Aruch that I need to keep all Shulchan Aruch. I need to wake up in the morning before of dawn and I need to do this and that and I need to make sure that I'm not forgetting the halachot and I need to learn and I need to achieve and I need to whatever it is written in the Shulchan Aruch. No doubt about it. But... I just want to share with you from my learning experience. The Shulchan Aruch is a very thick book. And there are many, many other books that are exp explaining the halachot that are written in the Shulchan Aruch, the rules that are written in Shulchan Aruch. And they are discussing and explaining specific situations in life that when you are getting in your life to a certain situation, the rule of halakha is changing in a way because of your condition. Now, for an example, a person must give 10% of his money for miser money. He's supposed to support the poor with his 10% of his income. But if that person is too poor and he doesn't have the ability to pay to give that 10% of money to the poor because he himself is poor, so he is not obligated to give that 10% anymore. Okay? Here is a case, a simple case, that a person is coming to the Shulchan Aruch and he's willing to keep Dalacha, and Dalacha is telling you you should give 10% of your income to charity, but you're looking at yourself without having your mind very deep in the Shulchan Aruch, knowing all the rules and understanding it, or being close to a real holy and righteous man that is able to guide you in the right way, you might hate yourself and chase yourself and blame yourself on not having the merit from heaven to give the 10% of charity. But you are not obligated at all because you are also a poor person that is in need. <clears throat> so, in reality, you don't need to blame yourself and chase yourself and hate yourself on not being able to give. Because the one that is giving all the bounty 
didn't give you enough that you'll stand in that position that you can give, at least not for now. And the Shulchan Aruch is accepting your condition and allowing you to continue with your life in a positive attitude, with a happy heart and a wishing soul, without giving your 10%, and it's still okay by the Shulchan Aruch, by the Jewish rule. So the Shulchan Aruch is a very thick book that is approaching every person to his life condition and life situation and is very understanding but you need to know all of it and to have the right spirit and the right wind on your back to push you to understand exactly how to work and how to run your life by the rules of the Torah, by the Halakha. If you just find yourself in front of those rules and every, them, every one of them becomes to be an obstacle in your life, is just standing in front of you and you don't know, okay, so how can I wake up before of dawn? If I'm not able to, if I'm working all day long, if I need to take my kids to school, if I need to make some things, some errands, I have some things, I need to, like, how can I do this and that? So, the halacha is allowing you to live your life. Just the problem is that we haven't learned enough and that the rabbis, the teachers that are guiding and teaching us are also not, unfortunately, are not wise and clever enough to guide us properly, to give us that lifeline, that supply of oxygen, to give us the ability to continue with our lives even though we're not able to keep all Torah mitzvot like that it's written on, like in the best case, ideally, like in the most perfect way. We need to understand that sometimes in life the road is bending, is tilting, is, is turning to different directions. And you need to learn how to flow in life and how to continue in your path of growth and learning even if you're not fulfilling your obligations ideally in the most perfect way of them all. Now for us, that we are people that on daily basis we're experiencing our failures. Every day we're looking at ourselves and we're seeing in a clear way that we can't make it completely. That even when we're learning, that learning is blinding us from feeling the emotions and the needs of our beloved ones. That even if we're going to pray in a minyan and we're doing the best that we can to pray three times a day in a synagogue with ten people, we're seeing that we are missing other things because of that mitzvah. And we're seeing that the challenges that Hashem, the one that is supervising on our life, are piling and piling and piling. No matter what you do, you're facing more and more challenges. No matter how much time you dedicate for shalom by peace in your house, you're fighting, you're finding yourself fighting and arguing. And you look back and you say like, I'm investing many more hours than I used to and it doesn't bring me to shore. It doesn't bring me to my answer. So what's going on? I'm learning and learning and learning and learning and I'm not getting clever. I still miss so much. And I finished all Shas, and I finished all Shulchan Aruch, no matter what. And I still don't know the language, and I still don't understand the concepts, and I still don't understand what in the world Hashem wants for my life. And in reality, there is only one reason why you cannot see the whole picture. Because it's hidden. It's not your fault. It's that generation. It's 927. It's not your fault. It's night outside. It's dark. You cannot see the light because the sun set in the west and it haven't rised yet in the east. Soon it will come. Now those are the hardest hours before of redemption. Those ones that are putting the most effort are experiencing the worst failures. They're trying with all their effort to reveal the light, 
but it's the hardest and darkest hours of the world. It's not your fault to blame. So don't blame yourself. Get rid of that devil that lives inside of you that is criticizing you and blaming you all day long insulting you and hurting you and breaking your spirit and humiliating you and crushing your self-esteem with no real reason with no real reason if you will check yourself and ask yourself and I am not in no way in the world justifying bad and evil actions I'm against it I'm working hard on myself never to hurt a fly. Never in no way in the world to hurt a person. I'm working very hard on those things. For me, for those people that knows my approach, my method, my classes, my, my, my character, you know that for me, Derech Eretz Kadma La Torah, the way of the land, is much more important than learning. For me to work on your manners, to be a human being, to be nice, to be polite, not to hurt no one. Those are the foundations of my personal building, for sure. Working day and night on those things. But I'm telling you, from my life experience, you cannot stop yourself from falling and failing. Look deep into the reality of your life. Accept on yourself from now and on not to be angry ever again. It's a joke. It's a joke. There's no 1% out of billion that you make it. No way. You're going to probably be angry with me before I'll finish the class. <laughs> you can't do it. It's not in your power. No more desire for money, no more foreign thoughts, no more sadness. Come on. It's hopeless. There's no way you can win that mission. <clears throat> but you know why you have a problem with it? Because you set that as a mission when Hashem Himself said that it's not your mission yet. Because we cannot achieve completion until He will decree that it's the time for complete redemption. The redemption of the world will come right after the redemption of our spirits and our souls. Only when you will set yourself free from all lusts and desires, things that are holding you back to be selfish and to be so scared and terrified, worried all day long when I'm going to receive and what I'm going to have, to be that receiver that we talked about him before. Before you will be redeemed from that condition, from that low way of living your life, the world cannot enjoy the light of your soul because your physical body is blocking the light of Hashem. Because your fears, your anxieties, your negative attributes are blocking the light of the Creator. So as long as you're still afraid, as long as you're still wrapped after your angers and your laziness, there's no hope for the redemption. So... We just said that there is no way for the redemption to come, right? Because if we cannot solve our own problems, and we know it in reality, you cannot do anything and to stay clean with that thing for good. You know you're going to fail. And the redemption depends on our inner success. So we're stuck. That's it. It's a loop. You're stuck in it. What should we do? This is why we are so important for the redemption. Because we are those vessels that are aware completely to the fact that we are damaged. That we are broken vessels. Broken. We are twisted. We are bent. We don't know the answer and it's not humiliating even. It's reality. In reality, be happy. You can smile to the camera. Do you know what happiness is? Set yourself free. You never experienced happiness. 
You don't know what it means. You don't know what it means to be free. We never experience those emotions. We never sense those wonderful things ever before. Why? Like a prisoner that came to life in the camps. He doesn't know a reality of outside the camp. He never heard of it. He's willing to heal. He wants to be open for those wonderful things. But when he is still locked behind gates and fences, there's no way for him to understand the taste of freedom. To see the sunrise from a beautiful beach, to see the view, to see the, the, the weather in, 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 in the world. No, he doesn't know those things. He lives his life in a, in a dungeon, in a prison, in a cave. He's blocked and locked. Now blame him on being a prisoner. He came to life in prison. We came to life in the exile. We came to life after more than 2,000 years of exile. <clears throat> 2,000 years after a horrific moment that took place in this world that the Creator took his face away from us. He decided in that day to hide himself, to remove the revealed supervision from the world. And he took the grace and the kindness and the beauty and the good and the wisdom and the prosperity. And the light of the sun disappeared. The wisdom being took from the wise. And the holiness from the pure. And the kindness from the rich. And the sensitivity from those ones that have a heart. He just took it all out. And we've been drained. We are experiencing that drought, that poverty. For years and years and years, for generations. And we are a generation that came last. We just came to this reality, to this crazy machine that is just falling and falling and falling and falling to depths that never been heard before. If you would tell Chachamim, those angels that lived in the generation of the Gemara, that they're going to be Facebook, and YouTube, and Twitter, and SoundCloud, and Instagram, they would kill themselves. <laughs> they would shoot themselves in the head. When they thought about coming in the last generation, some of them cried and begged to Hashem, don't send us to the last generation. <coughs> Without knowing on all the opportunities and the apps and all those craziness, Without knowing on all the gay clubs and Amsterdam and, and snoring cocaine in an after party in Shabbos morning, they didn't know those things. They never thought about those crazy ideas that we're experiencing with our children. That we're experiencing on our flesh, on our bones, on our skin. Tattoos and removing tattoos and making new ones and piercing and like whatever. If they would hear about the tests and the challenges that we are experiencing in this generation, they would lose their pure mind. They wouldn't make it. I promise you they wouldn't make it. And we are holding on. We are broken vessels, but we're holding on. It's such a strong fire out there. The darkness is so heavy and so thick. You cannot see one inch in front of your eyes. Things that are so clear in the next day, you're doubting them completely. Things that you knew with no doubt, that were 100% sure. And you look at them today, one hour later, one minute later, and they <clears throat> melt and disappear. No connection to them anymore. Can't feel it, can't understand it, can't think about it anymore. 
running away from it like from the fire, disappointed from life, disappointed from love, disappointed from the truth, disappointed from justice, disappointed from reality, from faith even, from confidence even. In reality, we are experiencing insulting after insulting, shame after say shame, disappointment after disappointment. And I'm talking especially on those ones that are walking in the darkness seeking for light, going and praying, learning to get wiser, sacrificing hours and days and months and years from their life for the Creator's sake for the holiness of their families or their communities and finding ourselves being rejected and humiliated and destroyed and ashamed and grind to dust. In reality, people are scared to talk about those things. Why? Because they're afraid that if they will talk about their fears, Maybe their, their, their fears will get even stronger. They're afraid to think about the disappointments because they're afraid to experience them again. And then if they will experience it, they might break them to pieces like it break them last time in the past when it happened. They're so afraid from the fear itself that they are afraid, we're afraid, to confront the fear and fight with it all the way. So we're running away from our own success. But in reality, we need only to do one thing if our pure intention is to connect ourselves to God, to Hashem, to the Creator of the world. And it's to connect ourselves to the truth. <coughs> the truth. Which truth? The truth of the Balatanya? No. The truth of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev? It's an easier truth? No. The truth of Chachmea Talmud? Those wise people that wrote the Gemara? No. Maybe the truth of the Mishnah, of the Zohar Kadosh, of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob? No. Simple truth. Truth of reality, that is your connection to Hashem. Because I have students, today a student asked me a question, when did Jews start circumcising themselves and why? Okay, nice question. Who is asking that question? Someone that doesn't have a clue what's going on in Judaism. Who doesn't know that answer? We know it, no? Not all of us. In this generation, it's a question. Hey, when? Something that is so obvious, something that is so known and famous, people don't know. Why people don't know? No one taught them. We came down to this world into prison, into the exile. I was watering my garden in Shabbos 20 years ago and a person asked me, are you, are you, how you call those guys? That are watering Gardner. their garden. What? Gardener? No, no gardeners. In Shabbos, who is that? What's the name Shabbos of them? Shabbos No, Shabbos Goy. <laughs> like those moderns that are allowing themselves Reform. to do whatever. Reforms, exactly. exactly. Come on, Shabbos Goy. <laughs> You're funny. He asked me, are you reformed? Like, maybe, maybe that's your faith. Maybe you oh. think you're allowed to water your garden in Shabbos. I said, no. So he said, so why are you watering your garden in Shabbos? I told him, so I didn't know you're not allowed to. When I started keeping Shabbat, I didn't have a clue what Shabbat is all about. I didn't know. I learned all the halachot that I learned from zero. They told me you're not allowed to lit fire. Okay, so I start with that. And then they told me that something else was also considered fire. So I learned and I heard and I follow up with that. But I didn't know about all the rest until a neighbor came to me and asked me, are you reformed? Why are you watering your garden? I said, well, it's not allowed to. Like, well, it's the best day in the world. Like, why? What? I'm free. I'm not working. What's the problem? 
I didn't know that it's a melacha, that it's a work and you're not allowed. I didn't know. Why I didn't know? Because my father never kept one Shabbat in his life until today, unfortunately. And my mother never kept one Shabbat in her life until today, unfortunately. And both sides of my grandparents never kept one Shabbat in their lives, unfortunately. Reality, we born to this world in prison. They never taught us that you're not allowed to water your garden in Shabbos. But now that I learned, okay, I can understand. Okay, I, I can keep myself from watering my garden in Shabbos. It's not a problem. In reality, we have not been educated. So we cannot blame ourselves. When you need to connect yourself to the truth, and that is your link and your connection to the Creator, because Hashem Elokechem Emet, because your God is the God of truth, and a person that is lying cannot be in touch with Hashem, because Dover Shekarim Lo Yikon Leneged Enav cannot stand in front of him, a person that is lying. So that's why you need to connect yourself to the truth if your will and desire is to connect yourself to Hashem. Because if I'm going to tell you, hey, connect yourself to Hashem, means what? What do you mean? One will run after tefillin, and one will run after Shabbat, and one will run and spend all his money for charity, and one will sit and, and, and make his wife crazy at home, and everyone will do something else crazy, and we won't find the real connection to Hashem. Because Hashem is the name. Okay, we follow the name. We follow Hashem. What does it mean? You need to connect yourself to it. And your connection is a connection of truth. Because if you're a liar, if you're a liar, even while keeping Shabbat, that Shabbat won't be a real Shabbat. It's going to be a fake Shabbat. Because you're going to keep it for the honor of other people. And you're going to keep it for foreign reasons. And you're not going to do it with truth. You're going to put your tefillin, you're going to so-called eat kosher and be observant, and it's all going to be in a lie. It's not the will of Hashem. Hashem Elokechem Emet. When you want Hashem, you need to connect yourself to Hashem with truth. Which truth? Your truth. Be truthful. To connect yourself to reality, it's to connect yourself to Hashem. Now in reality, you cannot purify yourself just like that. In reality, you cannot cut those patterns that are making you fail yourself over and over in the same things right away. It's not in your power. In reality. And it's not planting despair in you. It's planting the understanding that we are waiting for the real sunrise sunrise that will come from above the redemption that will come to us from heaven from him our understanding is our humiliation is the way that we will be humbled enough to understand that he is the almighty that he is the one that can shine the light of redemption on us because if you think that you are bringing redemption now with your learning, I'm telling you, you are still blind. Because the light of the Torah is blinding you to think that you are a reality. You're not a reality. The Creator is the only thing exists in this world. And he sent us to a mission. And in that mission, in this dark generation, we can do only as much as we can do. And we should do as much as we can do. But you cannot do more than that. You cannot. So stop blaming and chasing yourself. And just try to do as much as you can. And work on yourself to connect yourself to reality. That in reality... It's not your fault. You haven't sinned because you're evil. Not because you're crooked. Not because you're mean. Not because you're selfish and self-centered to blame. You've been hurt. 
and your soul and your emotional body been hurt many, many times before in different lifetimes. And you came to this world after so many humiliations and so many traumas you're carrying with you. Your self-esteem is so broken and cracked that even compliments you don't know how to digest and receive. Even a hug, even love, we don't know how to understand and how to interpret right. We are so traumatized, we're so broken, and we need to understand it, and not to judge ourselves and not to judge other people. Just to try, no matter what we're going through, and to continue, no matter which obstacles we're facing, only to make another step and another step and even if you're slower than a snail, even if you're so broken that you cannot move a finger in your Avodat Hashem, hold on. Just stick to who you are. Stay. Stay in your position. And even if you're falling back and you think that you are being rejected, don't let those negative thoughts reject you from your inner desire to improve and to have hope. Don't drop the wheel. Don't drop your dream. The redemption depends in humble people that are yearning for complete good, that are dreaming on justice, that are hoping for the Savior to come, that are willing to sacrifice soldiers Bleeding soldiers, wounded soldiers, refugees, people that are fighting for their lives, people that are holding on with their teeth, breaking their fingernails for their cause, for the purpose of their being, for the truth, to be truthful, to be good, to be kind, if you're married and if you're not if you have that house or if you don't, if your wife, she understands you and if she doesn't, if you can learn and if you cannot, if you can pray and if you cannot, you must hold on to who you are in reality and to drag yourself to another achievement, to make another step toward Hashem and not to give up on hope. We are that generation that we're all broken. Everyone are broken. Don't imagine to yourself that there is someone in a better condition than you. You don't know. You don't know what people are going through. You can dream how people became skilled on plastering and covering their shames and their pain. You don't know how many people are suffering and how hard they are. We don't know what's going on in other people's houses, other people's thoughts, other people's minds, other people's hearts. We don't know. Be happy with your share because you've been created to deal with your life mission. You have the tools and the ability to cross those challenges and to win them all and to succeed. And if you're finding yourself failing and falling on your face, it doesn't mean you fail. The Zara Kadosh is saying, who is the one that defeats the war, that wins the war? And the Zara is answering, it's that one that holds his weapon in his hand. So the Zara is keep on asking, how do you say that the one that won is holding the weapon in his hand? If he won, it means he doesn't have no more enemies. He can put his weapon down. No more enemies. He won. He doesn't need to fight anymore. He doesn't need the gun. He doesn't need the sword. <laughs> the Tsar is answering. The war never ends. And as long as you're holding your weapon in your hand, it means that you're winning. To win is to fight. To fight sadness. To fight depression. To fight anger, to fight your lusts and your desires, things that are separating you from the good. The good is Hashem. The truth is Hashem. Kindness is Hashem. 
being nice, it's Hashem. That those will be your connections to Hashem. To be good. To learn from the Torah how to be a better person. Not to finish Emma Sechta. Not to complete that book. That that book will make you human. That that book will change your attributes. Will fix your manners. That you'll be a little bit more humble. Nicer to your relatives, to your friends. That it will make you a person. A righteous person. A kind person. A soft and understanding and sensitive <coughs> person. There is no reward on reading, on finishing books. It's a joke. It's an excuse. It's not the desire of Hashem. The real will of Hashem is that we will be a lighthouse, a light to the nations, a light for people. That people will look at us and will admire us by what? That we will praise ourselves by <coughs> finishing whole bookcases full with books. Who cares about how many books you read? Who will learn from you because that you le learn so and so books? Like, who cares? But if you'll be nice, if you'll be kind, if you'll smile, if you'll be supportive, if you'll be a mensch, if you'll be a good friend, if you will be reliable, if you will be loyal, so then people will follow you. And then people will follow us to a complete redemption. All the nations, the wide world will follow our light. It's not an orthodox light. It's not a religious light. The redemption is not the redemption of the Jewish nation. The redemption now that we're facing is the redemption of the world, of the wide world. We're not waiting for a redemption of the Jewish nation. We're waiting for the complete redemption. For the trees, for the animals, for the nations, for everyone. We can just play a role in that salvation as much as we will be willing to give and to invest from our talents, from our powers, from things that the Creator gave us. The redemption is a complete redemption. So we should smile to everyone and to open our arms and to accept everyone that wants to learn and to teach. I don't have time to learn. I'm learning only from my downs, only from my failures I'm learning. Learning only from, oh, the ground again, oh, the floor again, oh, here is it, here it is. That's where I'm learning. When I'm crashing, oh, I learned that lesson. Oh, I learned that lesson again. That's where I'm learning. All the rest of my time, I'm teaching. When I'm falling, I'm learning. When I'm rising, I'm teaching. I have a good life. <laughs> Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, if a person wants to be kosher, he should prepare himself to thousands of up and downs. Thousands. Because you cannot purify yourself without those downs, without those humiliations. So we must understand that that supervisor, the Creator, thank you so much, he himself created the world in its shape to bring us to that stage in life that we're not able to redeem ourselves and that we will understand it and will be humble and then open our hearts and our mouths with a full and honest and truthful prayer to Him and will say one thing, save us, rescue us, answer our prayers, listen to our requests, come back to us. Simple requests. You don't need to be a genius to bring redemption. You just need to accept your humility, your real level, that you are broken. And instead of falling in the trap of evil inclination, hating yourself and blaming yourself for no reason, because you haven't created yourself and you haven't created this reality and you haven't turned off the light, when you're keeping mitzvot so the sun is shining before sunrise, when you're sinning so the sun is setting in the west before sunset, in reality, asking you, 
You lost a certain amount of money. Oh, because I defected my eyes. Oh, because I was not keeping shop. You're just blaming yourself. You don't know those things. You're following people that for years blaming you on your mistakes and on their failures, on not educating you right, and they're failing in their way of educating you. And they're blaming you instead of taking responsibility on themselves that they are failures, that they messed up with you. And now they're blaming you not to feel the shame of them being not worthy teachers, parents, rabbis, whatever they are, called. But in reality, everyone fails because it's dark. Because we don't see and recognize the obstacles, because we're falling, because we're weak. In reality, not because we're evil. Not because we messed up. No, we didn't know anything. Did you know? Did I know before I got married? Did I understand what it's going to be how to be married before I had children? Could I dream what it's going to be to have five boys? You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> They're cutting me to slices. They're eating me like chips. I'm nothing. I'm not able to deal with them. Could I think about this before? No. Oh, I want to have children. Yes, I'm happy to have them. But they're eating me like chips. What can I do? Can you prepare yourself to life? No. So if you cannot be prepared, why are you going to blame yourself for not being ready, not being able to stand the tests? It's like waves in the sea. Humble yourself to every wave and keep on swimming. Slowly, calmly. Make another act, another action, think another thought, pray another prayer, think another thing, try to do another thing, worked fine, thank you Hashem, didn't work, okay, let's try to improve, continuing, there's nothing else to do, holding hands together, loving each other, supporting each other, feeding, nurturing each other, helping, hugging, loving, supporting, respecting each other, that's it. No more than that. Don't think. Now you have a desire to learn. Go learn. Bless you. I love you. I appreciate. I'm happy for you. You have the time. Go succeed. Rise in the levels of Torah. Fantastic. In reality, you don't have that time. Keep on rolling. Keep on connecting yourself from the connections that you find in your reality in life. Do as much as you can. One chapter is also good. One line is amazing. Keep on doing something. People received for my videos on YouTube without opening one book, more knowledge and wisdom and information that you will have from reading billions of books. I'm promising you. Why? Because Hashem wants the wisdom to go through those filthy channels. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know why Hashem. Hashem chose those outlets. Hashem. I taught millions of hours of Torah until now. Millions of hours. A person doesn't live one million hours in his life. I taught hundreds of millions of hours on social media. Hundreds of thousands of people are addicted to my classes, cannot go through one day without those words of, of love and support and healing, and hear, heard hundreds of classes each, and... Now, can, can, can you understand it? Hashem wants it to be like that. Hashem wants to deliver the light from the darkness, from the filth, from the depths of the exile, from the worst technology ever been created, with the most wicked intentions to establish that webnet all over the world, to conquer the world. And the Lubavitch Rebbe said, Mashiach will come through the internet. When they just came and told him that there is something new called internet, he said, Mashiach will come through the internet. The devil is working, but Hashem is sitting above and has his own plans and he knows what he's doing and using the social media and all those outlets to bring the light from the depths. When you want to bring complete redemption, you need to lift the whole bucket, all package you need to lift from the bottom. Started from the bottom, 
now we're here. <laughs> Thank you. Chazakuruch. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.